Welcome back to the shop. Just going to do a little update this week, so hang tight and see what's going on in my world. Alright, so I was trying to do this project for the uh, May the 4th celebration and uh, time just wasn't on my side so it didn't happen. However, I'm not done with the project yet. I'm, I'm not quitting on it just because the, the day has passed. I've got a lot of work to do. So this is my Imperial Star Destroyer, um, where it stands right now. I just put the riser on the back here and next step is to lay in some wiring and stuff to make it, you know, have some texture along the body and then I'm going to spray paint the whole thing gray. Uh, nothing too fancy, not a whole lot of detail on this one because it's going to be the top frame for a shadow box that I'm doing that's going to feature the trench scene with uh, Darth Vader's um, X-Wing along with the two uh, co-X-Wings that flew in the, in the trench with them. Um, so scene I've always liked and enjoyed a great deal and I'm going to go ahead and miniaturize that into a really cool looking shadow box. Um, other than that, we have the two big mallets we made recently and I did some new footage with this uh, little, um, I'm calling it the No Pro, it's, it's not a GoPro, it's a wicked cheap knockoff, I think this is like $20 on eBay. Um, is it a super fabulous, like, high-end camera? Absolutely not, you get what you pay for. But it does some really interesting shots, and it's surprisingly good footage considering it's a $20 camera. Um, since it's usually primarily for cut-ins and possibly for some footage out and about, I'm not too worried about its quality. Um, I have my phone, which I'm currently filming on, and the Nikon um, Coolpix that I normally shoot with here. Again, cheap, inexpensive camera, and you know, it, it works good. It does what we need it to do. Uh, other things in the shop, a couple of quick things here, uh, table saw damn near killed me earlier today. Uh, I was making some cuts and I kept hearing this really bizarre sound towards the end of the cut and I realized that my blade was not quite as square as I had thought it was and neither was my fence. So um, I pulled up the manual for this rather old saw and got busy. Uh, my positive stops for 45 and 90 degrees are now set perfectly. My blade is square to the miter gauge um, slides and now my fence is perfectly done out again. Which means, not knowing how long this has been the problem, I'm probably going to have to redo my sleds uh, for the table so that I get nice accurate cuts. I'm going to try the the big sled as is first and see if I can just recut the kerf and see if that helps. Uh, the 45 is definitely gone. Uh, the blade is too far out of whack. I'm a positive stop for that. Um, and my uh, framing um, sled should be fine. I'm uh, just going to cut a new kerf there and it should be no problem at all. Um, I was asked recently on either Instagram or Twitter how I lay out a lot of my work and to be honest with you I don't. Um, nine times out of ten the plan is completely and totally in my head and I'm, I'm winging it more often than not. This is something I'm trying to get away from. Um, it's really hard for me for some reason to settle down with a piece of paper and, and use that list to, to get through the work. Uh, just not familiar to me so I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, a couple things I do like to use I want to share with you guys are these um, paper made um, mechanical pencils. Um, I get them at the big box store. These are a 1.3 millimeter lead. These things are damn near indestructible. They're great for setting your lines and uh, they really, really take a lot to break them. They come with a couple extra erasers, extra leads. Um, and most of mine I take and glue a little magnet on them so I can just stick them on whatever tool I'm working with and then when I'm done I can move them on to somewhere else and just leave them stuck on all of my machines around the shop. I've got one on every one and, and some extras over in the, <laughs> the mess in the corner. Uh, other than that, I use a 6 inch combination square, 12 inch combination square. These things are lifesavers. I promise you, 
These are not high-end ones. This one cost me like six bucks. This one cost me ten. You don't have to spend a ton of money on these things. They are just wonderful. Um, I've got this really old Raptor Square that I got from my wife years ago. I don't even know where we got it from. A um, little cheap old aluminum job, but it works really good. A small square um, for layouts. I don't do much over 12 inches, uh, to be honest with you. When I do, you know, I just use the Raptor Square along with my tape measure and then figure it out from there. It's usually like big stuff that doesn't need to be precise. Um, my mallet is much smaller than the other two. Um, this one I use a lot for setting things into place when I'm trying to get um, some some connect, good connections with pieces. As I'm, I'm trying to glue them up, I'll, I'll make a jig on my uh, workbench and I'll hammer the pieces into place before I screw them down so that my jig will hold everything in place. Um, I am gaining more and more clamps, but I find that more often than not, if I can just kind of screw a few pieces uh, to my table in some unique configurations along with some weights, I can get some really interesting angles like I did for these ones here. You'll see that in the video. Um, you yeah, these are a lot of fun. So, uh, other news. Um, not much is going on right now. I'm just trying to get into the new groove. Uh, my my job changed a, a, a few weeks back, and I'm on a Monday to Friday gig now, which is really, really cool. Um, but that means that every single week, I only have the two weekend days off, and I've got a lot to get done. So the time up here is, is taking a hit, and the good weather's coming, so it's going to impact it a lot also. So if you see a lot of irregularity on the channel, don't tweak. It's just the way things are for the summer. we got yard work to do. We're going camping this year. You know, we'll take some, some of those kind of vlog type of videos and I'll put those up as well, interspersed throughout the woodworking. If anybody's interested in those, if you're not and it's overwhelmingly not interested, then I will go ahead and, and set up a separate channel for those types of videos. Um, yeah, we're just kind of pedaling along and eager to see what happens come September. Um, as the summer ends and, and winter schedule sits into place, I'm also going back to school. And that in itself is going to be a unique challenge on uh, time and the absolute priority at that time. Uh, so during the, the school year or school semesters, I may go to once a month or just vlogs uh, over the, the winter time. Uh, we'll see what happens. But you know, stay tuned and, and keep hanging out with us. We're learning a lot and trying to share as much as we can. Thanks.